how's it going? My name is Jay and welcome to the channel and welcome back to October Lake and Planet Zoo, my new series where we're working on building this really large park situated in the Canadian Highlands, heavily featuring a lot of stuff we got in the new Aquatic DLC. That sounds good to you? Please do consider leaving a like on the video if you did like today's video and of course do subscribe if you want more Planet Zoo content. Now with that intro out of the way, I just want to say Happy New Year to everyone. This is the first video of 2021. Let's hope we've got a better year ahead of us. Big thank you to all of you for supporting my channel too. The past year, it has been a really great year for the channel. We hit a thousand subscribers. Been really, you know, been a really fun journey. And honestly, playing Planet Zoo and making these videos kind of kept me sane throughout most of the year. So big thanks to everyone who's been along for this journey. Today we're working on the saltwater crocodile habitat just behind the tropical house up here. It's going to be kind of um, a multi-layered habitat. There's going to be a bit of a waterfall. It's going to be underwater viewing and an overwater viewing area as well. And it's been quite a fun build this. Though I had some issues with my computer like halfway through this and I was really scared that I lost all the footage. But thankfully managed to save it to the cloud. So that's a little lesson for you guys there. Definitely always use cloud storage. Super useful. Um, it just saves all your stuff to the internet so that if you lose local files on your drives, you know, it's all safe. So I managed to save all the video footage, thankfully, and, you know, I could still make this video for you guys today. It's not going to be a super long video, definitely not as long as the previous few. This is only comes up to about 22 minutes, I think, for the time lapse and then a few extra minutes for the um, cinematics, of course. Got some decent cinematics for you guys as well. Uh, showing off some of the new diving animation for the saltwater crocodiles. It is uh, really great to see the, the um, saltwater crocodiles swimming and actually diving now. Really looking forward to these animations being added to other animals. For example, the, the gharials, I think, as some of the most aquatic crocodiles, I think the gharials absolutely will benefit so much from the diving animations. I can imagine it's going to look so good for them. It looks really great for the salties here. I think they look absolutely fantastic. So with the saltwater crocodile, one interesting thing that I've noticed is this is one of the first animals where I've built more than one habitat for on the channel, if I'm not mistaken. Um, the gharial was another one where I've built two habitats for it on the channel, but um, there are not many animals which have done more than one habitat. The doll sheep is one because I did one for Sandakovland and one for my previous park as well, but really not that many that I can think of. There are plenty of animals which I really haven't even built a habitat for like ever on the channel, which I'm hoping to explore with this park. For example, I've never built, um, as far as I can tell, I don't think I've ever built a bear habitat, like for any of the bears, besides the polar bear on the channel. So I'd like to do that in this park. I think I'm gonna use, um, well, a few of the bears at least, because I think this park really suits the bears. Maybe the Formosan black bear, the grizzly bear, all of them honestly look pretty cool. I'm happy to use any of them. Um, just a quick note, like bears in captivity, don't always do the best because again they are apex predators, very large apex predators like polar bears, not great in captivity. Um, some of the other bears can do a little bit better. I know sun bears do a little bit better than some of the others. Um, but yeah, we will definitely check those out and we'll talk more about bears and stuff like that in captivity when we do those videos of course. But today we're doing the crocodiles, so let's get back onto that topic. Uh, the saltwater crocodiles of course I've done um, nearly Wow, three times now on the channel actually, probably the most out of any animal so far because we did them for Boomy Reptile Sanctuary, we did them for Sanikov Land, and now we're doing them here. This of course however is the first time they'll have the diving animations which makes a big difference. They look really good in this habitat diving I think, you'll, you'll see them do that later. But they're a very cool animal of course, um, one of my favourites in, in general, saltwater crocodiles are incredible, very very large, very powerful and I've spoken the, about them a lot on the channel so you guys know how much I like them. They're just really cool animals and there's a lot to lot to talk about with them. Um, especially in captivity I think they do okay. Uh, crocodiles in general do all right in captivity as long as you give them enough space and you keep them and uh, from being overcrowded. Sometimes zoos overcrowd crocodile habitat and put in too many crocodiles and that can be quite um, detrimental to their health because crocodiles, like, um, some crocodiles do okay in big groups, like the Nile crocodile, if you've seen documentaries in, like, the Serengeti and stuff, they do, um, congregate in rivers in huge populations. Um, they don't necessarily benefit from it, but they don't have, like, a 
you know, too many detrimental effects besides like the occasional like territorial battle and stuff like that. But animals like the saltwater crocodile, the saltwater crocodile is almost completely solitary. They don't really congregate very often, and if they do, it's only for specific reasons like mating. And they, they range huge distances out in the open ocean sometimes, and they won't see another crocodile for ages and ages. So, you know, they're, they're like way out there. Um, I should actually talk about what's going on on screen besides just talking about crocodiles, as cool as they are. So on screen here, you see we're just building a little bit of waterfall. I didn't want it to look like too powerful of a waterfall because it is not that big a, a body of water. So I kept it relatively um, like tame. I put in a lot of rocks to make it look like the water is kind of like trickling through almost. Um, the rocks again using a lot of these four rocks, they're brilliant. Uh, instead of going for black for the shadows of the rocks, I went for a dark green so the rocks look a little bit mossy. And using the water effects here to make it look like the water is uh, streaming into this larger pond here. Which is of course where the crocodiles will be. Oh and speaking of which, uh, today we're not actually just doing the crocodiles, we're going to have a couple exhibit animals inside the crocodile gallery at the bottom there where the paths are. So we'll see those as well. Uh, you can see right now I'm using the aquatic path which I'm not that big a fan of. I love the railings of this path but I'm not a fan of the path itself. I think it's too heavily themed. It would be great for an aquarium I, I think but uh, I just, for my personal builds, I don't think it's going to be very useful. Uh, so what I do with them is of course I just put them down, turn on the railings to use the railings and then cover it up with some wood or like a flat piece of some sort. Using a lot of bamboo here I think it looks really good and using some of these wood fence pieces to act as kind of like um, a grate to prevent things from spilling through the waterfall like had to catch leaves and stuff like that. So you know that'll look, I think that looks pretty nice. The bamboo suits this area so well. I think um, like I've said this in the previous episode but bamboo is so versatile. Like I think it's one of the few plants in this game that works with almost all the biomes. It works with taiga, it works with uh, tropical, it even works with grassland and temperate biomes quite well. So I think the only ones it wouldn't really work for are the desert and tundra biomes, but otherwise you can use bamboo I think in any of your builds and it would fit pretty fine. Uh, using more of those the diamond leaf willows, those are also like a common theme throughout this park. I also use some of those yellow trees, uh, I think the yellow aspens, can't remember the name exactly but they work really well. Here I'm adding some enrichment items, the mud pit is always essential for me, I think it's a really cool addition. The mud looks really good, uh, just using some rocks to blend it in. And uh, if you notice I put a little sprinkler in the middle of that waterfall area as well so the crocodiles will be drawn to it. Eventually I have to actually get rid of some of these rocks because the crocodiles can't climb over them super easily. Uh, so. That's something I had to do as well. That's just me adding in a couple uh, rubbing pads and hiding them with the rocks so it looks like the crocodiles will rub against the rocks. So that's something I like doing as well. Um, so it's, 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 uh, yeah, I think it's overall turns out to be a pretty nice habitat. I needed to do a little bit of decoration here because this is the back of the tropical house. Uh, and we needed to just kind of clean things up, add a concrete flooring. It's not finished by the end of this episode, I want to do more. But definitely adding in a few planters and stuff just makes it look a little bit nicer and I think helps a lot with the outside appearance of the crocodile gallery as whole. Now I'm starting to uh, work a little bit on the depth here because I realized it wasn't deep enough for the crocodiles. So um, if you might have seen some of the other uh, Planners View content creators, their videos, they've kind of explained how the diving system works. And that is you need an average depth of more than 4 meters for diving to work. But that doesn't necessarily mean you need 4 meters in all the water bodies throughout your whole exhibit, or your whole habitat, um, basically. All you need is essentially enough deep water where the average is below 4 meters, so that they will be able to dive even in the more shallow areas. So, like, there are lots of areas here where it's shallow but the crocodiles can still dive down there and that's because the average is now um, below 4 meters. So. That's kind of how it works and that system I think works pretty well because then you can have animals diving in some of the more shallow areas as well. Here's a little pier kind of like board boardwalk type situation. I imagine that's where like some of the, um, the staff will be able to kind of go in there and maybe uh, put down some food for the crocodiles and stuff as well as just a little bit of an area for the crocodiles themselves to lay down and bask on. They do use it quite often, uh, especially the big one. Uh, we do have three crocodiles in here by the end, 
we have one big male and two smaller females. Um, here's me covering up the path by the way. I do like this lighter white colour using the stained wood, I think it looks quite nice. And I just uh, swap out the colours in some of the, uh, just, just like the odd plank so that it looks like it's been weathered down a little bit and it looks quite good I think. Um, just here, what am I doing now? I don't know, who knows what I'm doing, it's a mystery. Oh, I'm starting to work on the little fence here uh, that divides the divides the guests from the crocodiles because you don't want the guests to be in the crocodile habitat, obviously. <laughs> what am I saying? But yeah, here I'm just adding in a little um, a little fence and I'm using the concrete gridded pieces because then I can just duplicate them pretty easily. It does help a lot. I use a lot of concrete in this build to be honest, like a lot of concrete. And doing the reverse for the bottom as well for the underwater viewing, using some of these wood pieces. I think these are the arctic wood. Really versatile pieces again. The arctic wood pieces are some of the best wood pieces in the game if you ask me. Um, primarily because they are not climbable. So if you put these in a habitat, the animals cannot use them to escape. That's not true for some of the other wooden beam pieces. So if you use like um, the, uh, the South American wood pieces, those are actually climbable, which is really useful if you're building a habitat, but if you're building just like an exterior wall and stuff, you'll want to use the arctic wood pieces because those are not climbable, and that helps so much. Just a little bit of a, like a metal grating system here I'm building. Uh, it's just a light green, I think it looks kind of nice. Provides a bit of con uh, contrast, just kind of makes it a little bit brighter as well and looks quite nice, I think. Uh, working the path system a little bit. I think I mentioned earlier as well, we're going to include two exhibit animals in this gallery just, you know, to bring a bit more interest. But we're going to have two and I'm going to build them up a relatively shortly, I think. I cannot remember to be completely honest with you. Uh, this build is something I've been working on over the past week and I've kind of forgotten what most of the, uh, what most of the build was like. Uh, just messing around with the metal grate again a little bit. I think it looked pretty nice in the end, just trimming it off with some wood as well. and. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much what I do for this episode. There's going to be, again, those two exhibit animals, and then I'm going to detail the underwater area. But yeah, just taking this time, I just want to say again, big thank you to everyone for following the channel for so long. And uh, ever since we hit 1,000 subscribers, we've been growing pretty quickly. Like, we thought we're already at like 1,060, 1,070 maybe. It is pretty high. Like, it is growing way faster now that we've actually hit that. Yeah, 1065, that's crazy, I just looked it up. Um, so big thank you, love having all of you on board. Um, and those of you who are new, we also have a Discord server, you can check that out in the description below, feel free to join and just chat. Like, it's a very chill server, like we, you know, you can just chat about anything you like really, talk about animals, talk about the zoo, planet zoo, talk about my zoos, we'll talk about your zoos, literally anything, it's, it's very chill, but yeah. I do feel like I've been talking very quickly today, so I'm going to try and slow down a little bit. Here's me just um, making some planters on the side here as well. It's always nice to just, um, because the thing with this crocodile gallery, I think, is that it ends up looking very long, like very long with not much in it. So I decided to break up some of these edges by adding in some planters and stuff like that. And you'll see I'll break up the middle again by adding in some signs and some shelters and stuff like that. Ooh, this is something I do as well. I make a little staff area in the side. One thing I realized um, very quickly is that I don't actually have vets in the zoo, so I put down a vet center here. Um, I might have done that off screen actually, so you might not see that, but having a vet center is kind of kind of vital in the zoo. So I just put down one there. I'll probably make a, like a much larger, like uh, dedicated vet area eventually. So we can make an animal hospital. That'd be quite a fun build. Uh, that's just me raising up one of the areas up here. Right now, this um, this upper bit is not disability accessible yet, but I will be working on that between episodes. I might put in like a pseudo lift somewhere or work on a ramp system. Probably lift because I can't really see where I would add a ramp. But yeah, lift would be fine. Here's me adding in that yellow trim again whenever there's a step. I always find that that makes it look really nice. And at the same time, it just helps. Like if you are up there and you don't notice the the step you might trip so it's always good to make it uh, mark it out with some yellow and the yellow I think is not like too intrusive I think it looks quite nice. Heading in staff door there and then here I'm just working on some more planters for these odd kind of gaps between the tropical house and the crocodile gallery. I think having these planters really does uh, add quite a decent amount of 
you know, a bit, bit of interest and helps hide a lot of the, the imperfections, so to speak. Like the path curbs and things like that. And we can add in some of the uh, trees and things like that to make it look quite nice. Here I'm adding a little bit of a picnic area on the side, just making this whole area a bit more of a platform and then adding in these uh, nice metal picnic tables. Um, and then um, I try to mess around with some of these new umbrellas, but I think they're a bit too too big so they don't look super great like next to each other like that, see? Um, they kind of clip into each other so I decided against it. Um, here I'm adding an education thingy uh, and then this is where I start working on the exhibit. So we're going to do two exhibits, one for the blue tongued skink and one for the healer monster. So these are both lizards, um, both really interesting lizards and I thought they kind of fit the area because they're both quite like, uh, I wouldn't say armoured but they both have really knobbly thick skin which does protect them from predators and stuff. And kind of gives you that vibe of like, oh, you know, it kind of fits with the crocodiles because they are also knobbly and bumpy and, you know, tough animals. Adding in some wood and stuff like that to kind of go with the slightly more arid theme. Um, they're pretty cool lizards, these two. One cool, uh, cool thing that you might not know is that lizards are, like, a lot of people think that crocodiles are like, you know, they're just reptiles, they're probably pretty closely related to lizards. But they really aren't. Crocodiles, in fact, are very distantly related to lizards. And if I'm not mistaken, the crocodiles are more closely related to birds than they are to lizards and other reptiles, which is kind of crazy to think about. Um, but that's also because, you know, birds are reptiles. And don't get me started on that whole topic because I will talk for hours about how birds are reptiles. <laughs> but yeah, um, so that's a pretty interesting fact. That's uh, for you guys to know is that crocodiles aren't even that closely related to lizards. But, you know, they look like lizards, so... Evolution is weird, and it's kind of amazing, and I love talking about it, because there's so many crazy things that happen with evolution like that. Uh, here's me adding the healer monster in here as well. I love just adding in these 3D facades, but with the arid, um, the arid exhibit, I'm not the biggest fan of how they have like a blue fake sky background, so using these wooden pieces I think helps um, cover that up and make it look quite nice. So that's both exhibits in place, adding in some benches. Again, you can see what I mean by the fact that it's very long and doesn't really have like an awful lot going on. So it looks a bit too, how do I say, a bit too plain. But adding in the benches and stuff like that really does help. And just me uh, tweaking the roof a little bit for the tropical house because it does extend a bit too far in. I end up pulling it back a bit and making the roof extension just a tiny bit shorter and it does help. Um, top clear up that, that whole thing. Here's me uh, experimenting with some lift ideas, but I will do it off screen instead because it does take a little bit of time and I just want to like mess around with it and see what works best. Uh, just adding in a roof over the staff center over here. Um, again, very basic staff center. There's nothing too fancy about it. But whenever you have a big flat roof, it's always worth adding a second layer just to add some interest and to break it up a bit because they do tend to look very samey very quickly. So. Adding in a second layer like this really does help uh, just bring in a bit more interest. And I think it, it just looks good. Adding in some windows and stuff like that just to, um, again, bring more interest into it. Some pillars. Like buildings like this, uh, they do look a bit like boring after a while. So it's always worth just taking a bit of extra time to make them look slightly more interesting. Even if it is just a tiny bit. This is one of my new favorite things to do, by the way, is to use these new, uh, sorry, the, not new, they came with like, an update ages going back in March with the South America pack, these glass pieces and then use the um, metal bars and make these lovely little glass fences. I think they look really, really nice. And you can just repeat them and like go across and then align them a bit and they work really well as fences. I actually did that for one of the stair areas leading up to this place. So I don't think I made cinematics of that, but you'll see it in the cinematic at some point. That probably didn't make any sense. When I said one of the stair areas leading up here, I meant um, the, you know how the elevation changes in this park a lot, where the otters are leading up to the tropical house, it needed like several uh, ramps and stairs, so I, that's what I meant basically. <laughs> I'm just kind of uh, fixing up the outside here and then putting in the sign for the crocodile gallery. I call it a gallery because again, very long, very thin and uh, it does look a little bit like a gallery. So that's that, just keeping it white, keeping it quite uh, chill. I might eventually add in another color, but I think it looks okay. I'm adding in these just to make the entrances look a bit more interesting. 
Um, also, you may have noticed the zoo isn't quite open yet. I am going to open it relatively soon. I think after the next habitat, which um, I'm not sure what it's going to be yet. I think it might be the penguins. Who knows? Not entirely sure. But when I do open it, I'll make a big like cinematic video. Well, actually, no, I'll just make it in the vid in the cinematics of whatever video I'm making and just show show you what that's like, like with all the guests in here. Finally, just doing a bit of detailing with these rocks. In fact, a lot of the detailing is done in these last two minutes because um, I do some copy and paste work as well, just for the uh, rocks that will line the cliffside on the um, the surface here. But yeah, um, that was it for today's video. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. Um, hope you enjoyed learning a little bit more about crocodiles. If you did learn anything, I just kind of ambled on a little bit about them. But you know me, I do love my reptiles and I love talking about them. So yeah, they're very cool. Uh, you'll see a lot of st them diving in the cinematics. So yeah, I uh, hope you guys have enjoyed today's episode. I hope you guys have all had a really good New Year's. Um, I know life's kind of crazy right now and I've said that a lot this year, but it's, it just seems to keep being crazy. I'm back in full lockdown now in the UK, which is, pff, you know, it is how it is, I suppose. Um, but a quick note as well in the end, uh, once again, zoos have had to close and they're not getting as much support as they really should be. They've got animals to feed and stuff like that. So I do urge you, if you have a local zoo that is being affected by um, lockdown or by the pandemic as a whole, please do consider donating to them or sharing their tweets or anything like that. Any way to support them, even just talking about it does help. So yeah, I do urge you, if you have local zoos and stuff like that that need help, um, just you know, maybe um, talk to people, share some stuff, donate if you can. And yeah, just, they, they need our help, basically. And I'm, I'm probably going to donate a little bit more to London Zoo as well, because that's where I am, and they've had to close again. So fingers crossed that they, they get the support they need. Um, Yeah, with all that said, I, do, I didn't want to end on too sad a note, but uh, I thought it was important worth saying. But yeah, thanks so much uh, to all of you for watching, of course. Uh, thanks for supporting the channel throughout 2020 and hopefully throughout 2021. Uh, like the video if you did like it. Comment down below, tell me what you think. And of course, subscribe to see more Planet Zoo content. And as always, I'll see you in the next one. Bye, guys.